Hello to you out there in the world. This is the Testament of Christ, 1st of February 2016. Foundation of love is truth, and we have not had the truth. So therefore, I am going to give you all of the truth, all of the truth I know, which is most of it, at least what we need to know. We are eternal souls. We will not cease to exist. We were brought into existence, created by God. God created all the souls he intended to live a life on this earth at once. And he made the first human being. And that was the first being that was able to host a soul so that humanity could begin its existence. God's children, every one. A spell on earth, your first existence, is not the end. It's only the very beginning. God created the first two human beings knowing that they would error. Error was inevitable. This is God's plan, our mother and father. And we are in the last days of God's plan to come to fruition. Well, I say we're in the last days. Of course there will be more. It will not stop. But there will be a big change. God gave man dominion over the earth. And that will not change. But there will be a king of the earth to ensure the next 1,000 years we don't continue life of error and the negative the pain, painful unpleasant feelings that that brings that you cannot get away from what's happened over the last 6,000 years is a decline and a rise, but an overall decline in the state of the planet, people's connection to nature and God, and it's a testament to show that Whatever humans do to try and get satisfaction, nothing will satisfy you except God's love. And whatever you do, whatever you go after, whether it's power or just fun in unwholesome ways, 
degradating, degradating ways will lead to poor fruit. So we'll have no, we'll have absolutely no er, um, doubt about that, that we need God. Now I say we've had a decline and rise, so on different levels. So if we talk about the level of the soul, there was a decline that lasted for 2,000 years. Then there was a sort of a levelling off for 2,000 years. And then there was a, a, a raise, a rise in the soul conditions if you like but then at the same time the soul is subjected to the errors right from the very beginning so errors that our forefathers made got passed down so if you like the accumulative error has left us in a, a worse state overall but each individual's what each individual has to sort of put up with uh, has got better um, for example uh, 30 years ago if I went out in public looking how I look with long hair and a beard um, well not 30 years ago because that was the hippies <laughs> in the 50s in the 1950s you know I would have got treated very badly just because of how I looked and then we go back a few hundred years and I might have been burnt at the stake a couple of thousand years I've been flailed whipped crucified um, go back further than that well you know that was um, you know, there was probably some pretty dark areas of humanity in the past so in some ways we've improved but the accumulative effect has left us in a worse state so God is and will get involved and there'll be a new beginning I believe which is coming soon now God's plan from the start He, she, well, actually, although God is one, there are female and male expressions. And God made humans in his own image. And that is the soul part. That's what separates us from animals. And again, the soul has a female expression and a male expression and if you're a male you have the male expression part of the soul and if you're female you have the female now in the same way that a mother grows the fetus in her womb in a similar way we are in side of God and inside the female expression of God. So, God the Father expression, in order to connect and have, have an influence, 
decided that he would, well, yes, make a human. It's both God and mother and the father. So God made another human like he did the first two humans. If you like, impregnated a woman with a with the DNA of a human designed it exactly the way he she wanted to but it was a male and the reason it is a male is is because in the sense of us being in the female part of God this is this is if you like Father God's expression. And if you want to think of it, it's like Mother God, say, is the, the earth, the clay, the, the hardness, and Father God is a bit like the light that can shine through. There's a lot to think about when you're taking on truth like this. One of the big questions you might come to is, well, does God have a mum and dad and brothers and sisters? And that's something I've thought about. And I feel like God has shown me that, yes, once God had a life like we did, got brought into existence, and lived a life and one day billions of years in the future maybe we'll have gods and create a universe and do the same thing but really the most important truth is is what you need to know now not in thousands of years even So, staying at the beginning, when God created the first two humans, God could have, I would have thought, being omnip omnipotent, known exactly how each of their children would come out. And perhaps you've got the first 12 races and perhaps the new Cain would kill Abel and so <laughs> I mean that's another story that's another part of it but the races might well have been pre-designed into the DNA of the first two humans So then it's very possible that it is only 6,000 years ago and you don't have to change the truth in order to fit what we see today in the world when you look at different races of humans those differences you would have thought would take more than 6,000 years but if the first children were already designed to be as they are were then it's quite possible and so the next thing God did well probably not the next thing but the next after Adam died now he lived nearly a thousand years and I don't know if God waited then a thousand years before he would do the same thing make another human but this time implant it into a womb and let it grow from there rather than having to make a full size one. But still the DNA is there. And God would create that human exactly how he wanted to. And that I believe was Krishna and you can read about him in the Gita and that's quite possibly where or most likely where the name Christ actually comes from. So God makes a human being 
But then a soul attaches to it. A soul, a brother and sister, just like any child of God. But because God has made the human, he wouldn't necessarily have the genetic errors passed down from the first two humans, which was to feel they themselves could be gods and therefore didn't need their mother, father, God, who they were absolutely aware of. And <clears throat> over time, this awareness has also weakened so that this explains why people in the early days they knew the truth they were cleverer they were capable of doing things that we can't even seem to manage today and so but Krishna wasn't perfect because humanity was in decline so he would have grown up and taken on some errors and one of those would have been because he promotes to fight. Now, to be perfect, you wouldn't do that. But in that day and age, that was, that was so normal. It would have been all right to do. And he could still do that and still fulfill God's plan. Like we say, God is going to have designed it. <laughs> is going to know how it's come about, know that how things are going to come about. I'm sure, you know, there are still a few little surprises for God. I mean, you know, no one loves no surprises, like the song goes. So then, the next, the next Christ the next time God did this was I believe Abraham it fits in with the time and it fits in with God the the change of God in the Bible at this point you know there are different names for God and the beginning God the Elohim seems to have gone away. But then Abraham starts to refer to a God with no name, an invisible God. So the other gods, therefore, would have had names and would have been visible. And they're basically just spirits. Again, with that error of not needing God and wanting to be gods themselves, became gods. Or they at least told people they were God. <laughs> And probably had some power and influence and could do a few things to impress people enough to believe it. But so yes, yeah, so Abraham being the next one. And again, not perfect. But each time a Christ comes along now, it's sort of improving the situation. And although... Abraham, again, not perfect, isn't going to fully fully be at one with God, if we like. That doesn't happen yet. But I guess we get into a stage where people are, are starting to want to be fair. So, look, if someone knocked out your eye, you knock out their eye. You know, don't cut the head off and murder their brothers and sisters. So, if you like, people are starting to to understand that you know we can't we can't carry on like like this. Just you know, just basically, sort of. It must have been an awful time, in it a good time and an awful time because there's always pros and cons. So if I think back to history, I mean, they would have had. Fresh air, fresh water, beautiful, natural, just, you know, still good like that. But um, 
again, lots of bad things, lots of slaves, slavery starting, and well, that hasn't stopped. <clears throat> Sorry, I digress. Um, and, uh, and then the next one David again he wasn't perfect he had his role to play but he was seen as a king he was definitely seen as some sort of messiah because son of Jesse hasn't gone away um, but he had lots of wives so not perfect so then we get Yeshua, and these are each sort of a thousand years apart, pretty close if you if you can trust um, the lineage, or if you Google it. Then we have Yeshua. Now he was known; they were expecting a Messiah. Um, three wise men, Magi, they knew, and Magi, basically, they were cannabis users. Um, and he grew up knowing he was Messiah and he and God again made him for his purpose he had quite a, some tough times nearly got killed at, sort of in his 20s had to and healed himself and then must have come to the conclusion with feeling God, God wants me to be captured. God wants me to give myself up. God wants me to be crucified. So he had to come to that conclusion. The only way he could feel good, to be in truth, to know what he had to do. Now, let me just stress, all of these different Christs are a, it's a body of genetics made by God, designed for its purpose. And a soul that, however the souls um, choose what body, you know, how your soul chose your body, however that's done, rapport, connection, whatever it is, just a brother soul. Just like all of us, all equal in the eyes of God. And we know what Yeshua did. And we know a lot more now because of A.J. Miller. A.J. Miller was Yeshua. And he came back to give us the truth. He's not the Christ as A.J. Miller. The body he's got is like a normal body. Now after Yeshua, although he was born in 1182, which is quite a bit over a thousand years, um, Francis of Assisi was... Christ so his body was made by God now he didn't know his family didn't know much like you know David and Abraham and Krishna knew because he said it um, and Yeshua knew because he was told it and so Francis of Assisi what do we know about him? There's an excellent film called Brother, Son, Sister Moon. There's two films of about St. Francis. I wouldn't even bother watching the other one. But I don't know because I haven't watched it. But Brother, Son, Sister Moon is, is very, very good. Very, very good. Um, so Francis grew up, you know, quite a wealthy person in Assisi and 
him and his mates all went off to the war, the crusades going on. Um, but Francis, for some reason, came back. He didn't want to go through it. Um, had a sort of a, a long spell of people thought he was a bit crazy because he was just thinking and working things out to the point where he's knowing God he's taken his clothes off in public and just saying like, I just want to feel love you know the love of God and everything and you know the animals were not afraid of him and because they could see the love the, the love he had you know they didn't condemn him they let him do what he wanted to do and he he rebuilt some relic of a church that was off somewhere and his friends ended up joining him and they shaved their heads which lately I felt could be humility and perhaps towards the way women have been treated throughout human history but I'm not 100% sure on that yet now it says if you look up Francis that he was then half blind because he, he, he um, went and saw the Pope and in the film you know, he's basically saying to the Pope, you know, why do you want all these riches and everything? You know, can't you see this is against God's way? You know, God wouldn't want this and stuff. But the the Pope won him round, and there was a, a little murmurs in the with the people in the church saying, "What's the Pope doing? Why is he, you know, why is he accepting him and stuff? Why is he kissing his feet and stuff?" And he go, and the other guys like. Pope knows what he's doing. This man will bring the poor to the church. So that's probably why Francis went blind, because he believed the Pope. Now he's then said to have died in at about the age of forty, but so this is in twelve twenty ish. Now I I get the feeling that he didn't die he somehow managed to fake his death and he went on to basically cause the Protestant church movement now there are a couple of things differences with the Protestants and the Catholics and the Protestants say that only God can forgive you of your sins and the Catholics say no priest can do it and a few Hail Marys. So quite a fundamental difference. Now who else would come out with something like that? Get lots of people to believe in it. If not someone who was at one with God. And so let's talk about this at one with God bit. Because Yeshua was, was one with God. And I believe Francis too. And we have this thing about, you know, in the Bible about the first temple and the second temple, and then in prophecy, the third temple. So Jesus, at being one with God, his body was like a temple where God could reside. And if God is residing in the temple, God is effectively on earth. And this causes things to happen in, in people's souls. And that's how God works. He works through the individual. And there is a third temple now. I was born in 1977. My name is Stephen with a PH. And on July the 8th, 2015, I finally embraced the feeling that I was the one. And 
and uh, since then have obviously spent a lot of time thinking about that, <laughs> telling people, seeing their reactions, and living it, and I've refined it. I've obviously I wanted to work out what Christ was and everything, and so. But there's a lot of error out there, and you can say the word God to someone and then think, you know, that Jesus was God. There's a lot of that. Many are deceived <laughs> that that prophecy is true. Many will come in my name saying, I am Christ, and many will be deceived. So there's far too much talk about Jesus Christ and you don't need that you only need God if there's a living Christ on the earth then I don't know why you'd have to pray to him you can just pray to God but it might have an effect it might have an effect of opening up people making it enabling people to feel God perhaps like a conduit that's a potential as for me in my life um, things that happened to me when I was 19 which I've talked about in another video but cut a long story short I opened the seals and after the quiet of about half an hour well that was probably 2014 late summer when that quiet was over so for about 20 years there was quiet and that refers to me having opened the seventh seal and being so shit scared that I had to <laughs> build a compartment in my mind and just close off that area for a while. But that was awoken again when I first heard AJ Miller and I had had signs to show me that something was coming. And when I was first born again basically and felt God and felt the truth of that. So the key is feeling, you um, start to trust your feelings and you hear something which you find bizarre but you admit that what you had believed wasn't exactly satisfying you to be totally true. take it on see how it feels so then that is the truth of what's been and what's to come will come and that hasn't happened yet so we can't call it truth but what we can say is that God is real, God has a plan, and what will be, will be. And all souls will be saved. God loves every single one of you, us, the same. loves us all equally just doesn't love our 
ego and facade doesn't love everything we do. So God won't leave anyone behind. And if souls have been bent on wickedness and have only desired to do wicked things, they've only been hurting themselves. And when these realizations come to them, they will turn back to God. It's inevitable. There's a hard core of love at the core of every soul. A light that will never go out. There's going to be some repenting to do, some understanding what things they did that were wrong, through feeling. We've got a long existence to go. And you don't learn without making mistakes. So maybe some souls have suffered more than others. But I think we'll all get equal measure. It's so feels so safe and trusting to know that you know that we're so near the beginning of our existence we're being looked after and it's true This truth is far more interesting than any fantasy you could think of. And love is the answer. Everything is love. Love. <laughs> love in every way. Once you have the truth, it being the foundation of love, things will only get better. Knowing the core truth will enable you to know anything you want to know. And the key is to feel it all, to allow everything. Okay. That's all I can think of for the moment.
Okay. So now you've heard the truth of what has been and a bit of what is, but more about what is. For you right now, you've heard this truth. What should you do with it? Well, on hearing the truth, your mind might have said to quite a lot of it, oh, that's a load of crap. <laughs> and you won't think of it again. You'll know when you take on a new truth because you'll have a realisation. And what you can do is understand things that have happened in your life, in your past. Perhaps if you sit for 10 minutes and a memory comes up, it's one that comes up quite a lot. Um, there may be something you don't really like about it. It might cause regret. It might cause something else. Or you just think it's funny. You don't know why you keep thinking of it. When you take on a new truth, one of these memories or some of these memories might suddenly make complete sense and then you'll say ah so I know why that happened yeah because this universe we're in it's you know you think of it as physical and hard but as we know if you go down to the atomic level you know this electron spinning around quantum physics these things are only coming in and out of existence but just at a very very fast frequency it is just one dimension it's one you'll only be in for you know a hundred years or so and then there's another dimension where we go when we sleep. So every single night of your life, you're spending several hours in another dimension. And a lot of people aren't, don't even have that in their mindset. It's like, as far as they're concerned, the batteries are recharging and I'm not existing. But that ain't the truth. You're always existing. There's no gaps. There's no downtime. It's only the physical body that needs that sort of rest. I mean, say that sometimes, you know, you could, the soul may enjoy some blissful gaps. <laughs> but no, there's no gaps. And so this universe that you're in, and let's face it, planet Earth is practically the only place you can live and breathe, so, you know, the rest of it, as far as we're concerned, may as well just be there to look pretty at night and to give astronomers <laughs> something to look at. It's not really relevant. What is relevant, what you do care about, is other people, how you feel, someone you might love, children, family. It's mainly people area is, and we all want to be happy. So, you know, it's what we all want, and we. We try and strive to do that, most of the time doing completely the wrong things because we're relying on guidance we've had from people who didn't know either. <laughs> so that's why it's in such a bloody mess. Not to mention when you've got a lot of people who have died, they like to stick around because they're they, they still want to taste of the earth's pleasures because again they don't know what's going on and they don't want to face their, their bit of retribution to get to the next 
the next place. Which we should all do, because it gets better. You know, you don't know this, but it does. So, the truth is that you are in control of your life to the point where you react to what happens. And you can plan things and try and do things um, physically. But what you might be unaware of is that your soul is connected to God and knows it's connected to God and fully aware, you know, can't get away from it and will create things in your life to to try and make you <laughs> realise what your soul wants. So your soul is creating all the time and as you work against your soul you degrade your soul to a point where it's less able to create than it was so if we take children children create some marvelous things around them just it's amazing how it can happen you know god god is amazing for example um, going on holiday with my son he wanted skate parks and uh, one year we marked them out on a map and, and tried to find them and then couldn't find them and the next year we just found ourselves rocking up at skate parks finding skate parks <laughs> you know without 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 trying and, and in a sense what I'd done the year before it was I was trying to make it and then the next one just letting go and letting it happen I believe that was my son's power that created those obviously he didn't make the skate park but the fact that we were just ending up at these finding them not looking for them was quite amazing and and you have to sort of you have to analyze it like that and just accept when something has happened it was meant to happen now we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or in half an hour and it may well be quite often nothing particularly interesting happens but when they do you take note of them. You can't help it. Because they'll keep coming back to you. You know, you put it off now, it will come back to you. And 50 years, you might be dead, and some other person tells you, oh, yeah, you know, you're these things that come up, you've got to let them happen. And you're not going to get away from it. And that might scare a lot of people to hear that. And what I'll say to you is this. The worst part is over once you've decided you're going to go through it. I think, you know, it might give you the thought, well, you know, it's so easy. Why didn't, why didn't God design it so, you know, we, we just knew what to do, so... We didn't lose the truth and everything else. And the, and the answer I have to that is, look, God is preparing us for an eternal life. So God knows things about the future that I haven't even begun to comprehend. So we have to accept the way it is. And I'm the sort of person, I'm a bit like Sherlock Holmes. I would, you know, investigate every possibility and eliminate them and that's how I've got my way to truth and when I got to AJ Miller yeah some of the things he said were shocking 
Like if he had said at the beginning, if I had heard him say, yeah, 6,000 years, I would have turned off that. What crap. <laughs> I would have. The fact that he said 100,000 years even made me, what, really? Yeah, I suppose it's possible. Um, but that was before I was understood you could feel the truth. And I suppose I I kind of believed that I could before. I remember people saying the truth the truth hits you. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't really have a, a full picture. And you need a full picture to understand it. So that's what you want to do. Every day, try, find some time to remember your life. And if you're not happy, you know, think back and, and um, you know, remember a time when you were and try and see what, 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 you know, what fork in the road was there and with the regrets try and work out because it's quite possible that I mean I've ha I had regrets and then I'd sort of seen the truth of it and now I'm really glad it happened because otherwise I may have been on some other path and then would never have got here. Here's the um, solved the riddle of the zigzag. When I first found AJ Miller, I thought, wicked, Jesus is back. I had this dream that we were like in, in Pharaoh's place when, when you know, when Moses is throwing down the stick and it turns into a serpent. And I was like there with A.J. Miller. A.J. Miller was there. And he was like frustrated. He was like, I've done everything. I've done everything. Like, you know. Like, you know, why why hasn't it worked yet? I've, there's, I've done everything now. And, um... And the, the the puzzle seemed to be the a zigzag stick. And actually, that was the holiday when I went. I sort of went do a straight route. I'll go in zigzags, and we were finding loads of skate parks. <laughs> um, the path. You want to be on the right path to God. So, it won't necessarily be a straight path to God. So, if you think at the beginning of your path, if you think, you know, this is a path to God, but I'm doing this, which is slightly off. It's slightly off. But, it's the way to go. Because, then you come to a destination, you'll have done that bit, got that bit and then the next path you take again might seem a bit off a bit off right I'm not talking backwards I'm talking a bit off and it follows zigzag like that and I believe that is the answer to the riddle of the zigzag stick sorry I digress <laughs> But I, I'm glad I got that in there. Um, yes. So you're going back through your life. Understanding your life and what's happened. And that will help you 
resolve issues that you've created through your it wasn't your fault because if you like you were told the wrong thing plus you've got um, genetic errors which is your part to play it's not necessarily you it's your part to play so you know because love is the answer so you've got to love yourself it's very important if you don't love yourself you're not going to accept love from others So don't beat yourself up. Be who you are. Play your part. But analyse your whole life as far back as you can go. Don't be too ambitious, you know. If you can't remember 10 years ago very well, just go back year by year. If that's, that's usually quite doable. And it's quite interesting if you go back year by year, you think, well, what was I doing last year? Say so it's February. What, am I doing? what was I doing last year this February? What was I doing a couple of years ago this February? What was I doing five years ago this February? You know, and then because it helps the time of the year, and then if you do it three months later in a different time of the year, and I mean, I, I'm not saying there's a there's a way to remember things because to be honest, um, your soul knows the order very well in which you should. Deal, deal with things so just allow everything that comes up and quite often something can come up and very quickly you respond you cast it off and you probably practiced casting something off so watch out for them because within them are actually really good ones you can sort out and you sort them out with your new truth. So you think about something and you think, well, that was an irrational fear because now I understand that this is the truth. So that was just an irrational fear. And quite a lot of fears are like that. And they, in fact, they've been designed. They, you know, there have been entities working against God and, you know, up until very recently it must have seemed like they were going to win out um, but they're not so the deception is huge I mean yeah. I want to say it again you know people use toothpaste check out the ingredients they're in domestic and industrial cleaners cleaning solutions I mean they only care if they make your teeth white and sparkling they're not looking after your health Plus the fact of the toxic fluoride, mostly produced from the as a waste from, um, so it is toxic waste from the phosphorus industry, pumped into your toothpaste. If you want to check out, most of the toothpaste in this country and Europe is made in a factory in Poland, and you know, who knows how those barrels of fluoride arrive and what pictures they have on them is toxic waste and you're putting that in your mouth which is absorbing into your gums bad for you anyway the deception because you've been told to brush your teeth twice a day for your whole life if you live in the western world and lots of little songs about it so not to do that, as I don't, takes, you know, takes some thought about, well, what is the truth? You know, why am I doing this? Instead of just the natural reaction to go and do it. It's just that, that, little, that little leap of faith to, to, to do something different. And so a lot of things in your mind will crop up And it's an area you don't want to go. You're just like, I don't want to go there. Go there. You're going to have to go there one day. And you'll be so happy when you do. <laughs> you know, you'll be 
perhaps a bit frightened at you, you know doing it but you'll be so happy when you've done it and have God with you do that and love love is the answer to everything couldn't be simpler really could it which is why it's hard to believe too couldn't be this simple God made it simple children can understand it why has there been so much shit then like I say preparation for an eternal life we go forward that eternal life with no looking back oh maybe if we'd have tried this maybe if we'd have done that right none of that for an eternal life no looking back no ifs no what ifs you gotta know so then once you've gone back and you've sorted out some shit and you and you see how your life improves you see how you feel better and the decisions you make are better not probably not perfect right don't you know again don't beat yourself up because when you're in a loving when you're in a happy state you sort things out much better and it's not going to be happy all the time there's a natural ebb and flow of how low you are and how high you are there's a natural ebb and flow anyway we're not flatlining flatlining along like robots there's a natural ebb and flow But when you're happy and you're loving yourself, you sort things out much better. When you're negative, you're not going to sort anything out. It's just not going to work. So. And things take time, day by day. So when you've gone back through all your memories and you've sorted some of these out, then then all you have to do is just react to what happens. But, you know react with common sense knowing the truth take your time to analyze things right this happened okay how do i feel about this you know because quite often a curse can be a blessing and a blessing can be a curse it's quite often the case it's good Okay, one of the big barriers is going to be you want to prove it. You want to hear it somewhere else. You want to read it in a book. Because when I say feel the truth, there's going to be quite a lot of fear with that. Because you're going to think, okay, if I decide to feel the truth, what about if I feel something that's really awful? Now this kind of happened to me when, back when I was first listening to AJ Miller's stuff. And he was talking about when spirits um, host another person or overcloak somebody else. And I suddenly had the thought that maybe I'm a spirit that's jumped into this body when it was a little boy 
and I'd been living the life the whole time. And I felt the front of my face like pull off. It felt like it was pulling from the front of my face. So then I thought, oh my God, I've had a feeling. That must be true. So not just because you had a feeling it must be true. You start to uh, refine feelings. And, you know, I, I... I th you know, that, in a sense, you know, thinking like the worst of things, and that was like the worst of things I could possibly think of. And so I did allow myself to mull on that quite a while. Um, I've since had so many more feelings, and when I get a feeling of truth, it's definitely something in the core, in your core, and like a rising good feeling and when you're in truth you'll be feeling good when you can't bring yourself to believe it you will sort of be feeling a bit down because of it so what I would say is you know if, if you're thinking about feeling the truth and then you're worried oh my god I might feel something and and the, that I don't want to be true and and things and things like that, you know. Well, you know, just don't worry and you know, if you only want to put yourself half into it, are there, are there any halves? You say to yourself, right, for this day I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna this day I'm gonna try feeling and believing and everything else. And um, see what happens, and then so say to yourself, well, then the next day, if I don't want it, I'll go back. But I think you'll find you're actually quite surprised, and that a lot of what you want to be true is, because it's the it's deep down in the soul. And if you go back to stuff you felt and thought when you were a child, you know that that could quite possibly be true too. So I just wanted to add that on. And um, thank you if you've listened to this. Well done. <laughs> what can I say? Love you. Bye.